Good evening, everyone. On this Tuesday, I'm going to say late afternoon, early evening for another edition of the MYBC Virtual Bookstore Author Series. You know, it's a place where I bring creative minds together that have written books, help others write books, or um, I'm, I'm excited for today because I just want to get into like our guest author tonight. When I hear the word thrilling ride in a book review, I just am so excited to, to, to chat with our author tonight. And in the future, I'm so excited. Today, I met somebody who does ghostwriting, but for the ebooks for business. So um, it's all these different people that when we take pen to paper or voice to recorder um, in order to get the books out there into the world that you can enjoy. So without further ado, I will I would like to welcome Brady. Uh, good evening, Brady. How are you tonight? Uh, I'm good. It's Brandy. Brandy, Brady. What? <laughs> you know what? I have a I have a friend named Brady, and that's why it's there. Brandy, Brandy, Brandy. Yeah, that's fine. It's I like the name Brady, but uh, Brandy's my name, so <laughs> I'm doing good tonight. Well, welcome, welcome to this. As you can tell, this is not like heavily duty professional. It's just two. I'm in my kitchen. Um, you're in your living room. Yep. And we're going to talk about um, your book. So first of all, where do you live on this big blue marble? Um, I just recently moved to Kamloops, BC Ooh. in 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemic. We were in Langley before that and then sold our house for a good dollar and moved up to the beautiful Kamloops area on the river. So it's a it's a great spot. Lovely, lovely. So what genre is your book? Um, it's a memoir and also a reimagined biography, which is okay. a new word. <laughs> okay, so I've not had someone on that has done a memoir and a reimagined biography. Yes. So please educate us we, we all should know what a memoir is. We talk about ourselves and we write it down. That second phraseology, I am intrigued. <laughs> well, it's um, Klondike Kate, who is one of the most famous women in the Klondike, which my book is revolves around the Kl Klondike gold rush. There was very limited information about her. And so what information I could get about her that I patched together is all real and true. And the rest of it is that I made up in my own imagination from spending time in that area of the yeah. world. That's basically the word we came up with for that. That's a great word. That's, yeah. a, that's <laughs> a really cool word. So a memoir, why did you want to create, to take pen to paper and write a memoir? What's so special about your life? That, that part of my life and that story has been with me for a long, long time. And I've always wanted to get it out just because every time I brought up what I did for a living, people were so intrigued and so interested and they still are. So it was, it's just a very unique way of life and something that's totally different than most people would be experiencing. And um, I just wanted to get it down. And I would, I wanted to get a cameraman to follow me around for years in camp long before all these reality shows came out about gold mining there's there's quite a few of them now so i was the original person that wanted to do that because i just know that people love hearing about these adventures yeah. that's kind of how it started so your life involves gold mining explain yeah. explain <laughs> about your life as a like, about that Okay, so um, I wasn't always a gold miner. So this started in my late 20s when I met my then husband, who we're not together anymore. Um, when I met him, he had just started gold mining just the previous summer. And when we married, uh, I was whisked off to the Yukon with him and started gold mining, didn't know anything about Actually, I was a person who didn't even like camping. I didn't, you know, I always had my hair curls and makeup on. And here I am just whisked away to the Yukon to learn how to run huge equipment and live in a very, very remote camp. And that's how my life started as a gold miner. Oh, there's, there's so much as like, I like to say before we came on in the interview world to unpack there. Mm -hmm. How did you for lack of a better word that comes top of mind right now, how did you assimilate into this new life that I'm sure when you were courting, I guess, or dating, 
you never would have thought that that's where your life was going to end up. No, I never thought that at all. Um, I mean, I knew he, that he was an adventurous dude when I met him and that's what attracted me to him. Okay. <laughs> so I, I've always wanted to be an adventurer. So that was always a goal in my life to do those kinds of things. So when, when we went, first went out there, I was just excited about everything. I was, I, I was like, there's one sentence in my book that says I was like a, a child with my eyes wide open the whole time. Cause that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. I felt I was just seeing a whole new world and it was so exciting to me. And it, to me, I just basically fit right in right away. So <laughs> it was something that I still long to do. I don't do it anymore. And it's something that I, I still, once you have gold fever, you never lose it. It's, <laughs> it's with you forever. So, so how does one go about writing a memoir? Because you were you were talking about is my is it Klondike Kate? Is that the person? Yes, Klondike Kate. Yeah. Okay, so you've got Klondike Kate stories that you want to cover, and you've got your own memoir of the stories that happened. How does one go about remembering and attaching the feelings that me, the reader, need to experience with you that's happened in your life? Like, how do you go about doing that to keep it? intriguing i just, just i was basically writing writing things like in my journal basically i was writing mm. my book as a journal so i was just i could feel all those things i can flash back to those situations and those things that happened to me just like that like i can make right. myself be back to those times so it was pretty easy for me to to get that across to people because there's a lot of fear and anxiety and all kinds of mm. things tied up in my stories so I think it's kind of easy for people to to feel those fears and things that I was going through at the time and so. weaving through Klondike Kate's story through your memoir mm -hmm. what brought that kind of cool methodology uh, to light it's such it's a it's a bit of a story, but um, we'd moved creeks a few times. So when you're a gold miner, you either stake your own creeks or you lease them or you buy them. And we had leased some new cl new claims. And I'd heard stories, rumors around Dawson City about this old guy that used to work on the claims that we were working. And as soon as I, everybody had been looking for, because he died years, many years ago, and everybody had been looking for his gold, his lost gold, they, people had thought that it was still there. So as soon as the very first time I landed on the airstrip and I looked around and I said to my ex-husband, if, if I were John Matson and I needed to hide something, that's where I would hide it. And I just pointed out to this rock outcropping way, way in the distance. And he thought I was nuts. And I finally made him take me out there months later after we started mining there. And as soon as I went out there, I found this coffee can that had a bunch of stuff inside of it. So I won't tell you the whole story. But when I found this can, I immediately flew into Dawson City to the museum. Mm -hmm. And they, um, oh, in the can, I found a letter. And actually, it was a newspaper clipping where I found out that Klondike Kate had married the man who was had first staked the creek that we were mining on. So that's how it came to be. And in the bottom of the can was the chain. That's why the name of the book is The Chain. Okay. And I found out that's how I patched this love story between these two people together. And I realized that Klondike Kate and myself lived parallel lives. We, we had done things for the man in our life that had uh, forsaken us and who had uh, left us for other women. And she had become quite wealthy and I I was quite wealthy at the time, but we both lost everything. We were fortunes made, fortunes lost, love made, love lost. And uh, it's our stories are combined together. And it all is because of the chain that I found. So that's how it came about. Uh, I, I don't know about you watching this on the replay or watching this live. I got little tingles. Like <laughs> sitting here listening to this, like I want to experience this adventure so i i have to get your book because this is it just it sounds fascinating instead of having that that one memoir like you're getting almost like three or four people yeah. memoirs all yes. in the same book yes and it's also amazing to me how i found this stuff it's almost like they wanted me to find it ah. like how would i how would i pick that out of the middle of nowhere in the middle of the yukon wilderness how would i know where that 
that was like I was meant to find this for a reason, whether it's just to write my book or I'm hoping it will be a movie one day. So I, I have my hopes. <laughs> well, I like that. Now, was it Klondike Kate who put the can together? No. I was trying to think, were you dialing her inner femininity no. or something like that? To, so it was him. It was him. So he's buried. I didn't know that either. He was buried on the creek that we were mining. So our okay. creek that we were mining. He originally staked them in the early 1900s. He mined there for 40 years. He died there. Um, that's where I found the can was there because he believed that people were stealing stuff from him when he left mm. the claims, which weren't very often at all. And so that's why he hid these things. And I still believe that there's 32 cans of gold buried there. And I think I know where they are. So <laughs> that's my next adventure. Oh, oh, wow. That's exciting. So let's, I want to unpack the two parallel story. Um, I'm going to say setting up research because you, you had your own that you needed to pull together. Yes. And what did that look like pulling that story together and writing that as well as what did the research look like and kind of the time frame of each? Because I'm sure if you wrote just like about you, that mm -hmm. probably would have went, you know, pretty smoothly, it, mm -hmm. but to parallel it with history mm -hmm. and research and stuff like that and marrying it all together. So what did that process look like? Well, I must say that I found the research part more enjoyable and mm. easier. And I've, this is the first book. I'm an indie writer, so it's my first book. I found that researching to me is, was really um, interesting. And I love doing it. I think I've always been a researcher. So that part to me was easy. Um, also, my part, it was easy, but a bit tougher because I kept feeling like people wouldn't want to listen to, people mm. wouldn't want to hear about Okay. You know, I always thought people wanted to hear about it, but when I started writing, actually writing it, I kept thinking, oh, I don't know if it, you know, so that was a little bit harder for me. But I, like I said, I just wrote it as a journal, mm -hmm. more, of, more of my diary and just memories and things that I had of those times. So, um, but really, really got, like, this is something I've always thought about doing mm -hmm. since I started mining, but I took a, a speaker training program. Oh. Uh, I'm going to do a little pitch for it. Anna Mullins of Unapologetically Her Speaker okay. Training Program. Okay. And she's the one who helped me really get the flame un lit under me to get this going. Because once I did the speaker training program, I kind of already had written a small story already. So that I could really see how that could come together as a book. For me, uh -huh. I, it was she really helped me a lot and that program helped me a lot so I would suggest to anybody take a speaker program because it does make you feel like you have a story to tell so I, I love that that I can en envision working I, I'm very familiar with un unapologetically um, oh are you oh that's good yes I am <laughs> um that when she came along and put that flame underneath you and it burnt the doubt like it just yes. the doubt yes. was just like cast away and burnt well, when away. I had to speak in front of other people because my ah. first speaker thing I was only in front of friends and family like 100 people and then we had to do another one at the Sam Man Hotel um as I think it was about 500 people mm -hmm. and when everybody I was the last speaker and when my story was finished I got a standing ovation by these people and I just thought oh my gosh people really want to hear this like it just it really got the flame going so yeah that's <laughs> so good so from first went Okie dokie, I'm going to take a pen to a piece of paper or mm -hmm. however fingers to keyboard to you receiving that book in your hand. Mm -hmm. What was the timeline of that? And how did you set yourself up for success? Meaning your sphere of people around you going, hey, I need to do this and you need to maybe take a back seat for just like a little bit. What did that look like? Um, so I think in total, it took me a year and a half okay. once I started and I do, did have the help of, uh, the self-publishing agency in Vancouver. Okay. So Anna Mullins also led me to those people. So they helped me cause I had no idea how to do any of this. So that, that was a great help. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was about a year and a half from pen to actually getting it in my hand, but I just got them in my hands two days ago. So that's kind of interesting. 
Fine. And what was the rest of your question? Sorry, I got sidetracked. So how did you say your, like your, your family, do you have a full-time job? I don't. Uh, Okay. So you were, this is what your project was. So, but still, it sounds like, are you married again? I am engaged. I'm not married yet. Okay. But so engaged time. again. And mm-hmm. it sounds like that person that's in your life right now, it's been part of your, you know, support system on getting this book. Done. How mm-hmm. did you just kind of say, cause you're dating, you're engaged. It's like, mm-hmm. you're in that lovey dovey stage. You're like, but I got to get this out. Like I got to go three hours or four hours or eight hours to, to work on my book. How did you set that up? And the reason why I ask you that, um, Brandy, um, is, there's conversations that you could help somebody out there who wants it, but they don't know the right communication words to Mm -hmm. use to their significant other or kids or Mm -hmm. sphere of work. So this is why I asked this question. How did you get your people around you to support you and leave you alone to do your greatest work? (laughs) Everybody's very supportive, especially my fiance, Norbert. Um, Norbert is probably the best person that I could have ever fallen in love with after my marriage because he's so supportive and he he knew I mean he I talked to him all the time about this life and he was very interested in it too so um I often wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety I have to get this book out I just I had to do it and he supported me not only um in letting me you know not work and Financially, I guess you can say he also supported me that way. Um, my my mother and my son and everybody is so supportive. They never bothered me. They all understood when I, I would only do about three, four hours a day. And sometimes I was the kind of person that would only write one or two days and then I'd take a break. Okay. And I always still managed to spend time with my mom who needs, um, she needs people around her at this time. So I never ignored people or anything. I did it at my own pace and I wasn't like... I got to do this every single day. Okay. I just did it how I felt I could write. Right. And um, everybody was just really supportive. So I didn't really have to have those conversations with it. But anybody, it was just a natural thing that they they understood that I had to take time on certain days. So. Uh, that, that's, that's good to know. And, and a question being, when you write a memoir, and if, sure enough, you've got this um, person that you've researched in their life, you're sharing your own life and you've got this new fiance and you've got, sounds like uh, when you said before you're at your son's place uh, mm-hmm. now doing this interview, that resharing some of the things from a past love <laughs> and now with your new love, how did that go about? Because there, it's like living in with a, I would say, for lack of a better word, a ghost of yes. somebody in, in your relationship. So how did that look like? Well, um, my last relationship didn't end well. Okay. Um, so there was a lot of hurt from me to him. So uh, there was a lot of times that my fiance, we've been together for nine years already. Now, okay. So, um, he went through a lot of the pain and suffering with me. I met him three years after me and my ex had separated. So we went through a lot of that grieving part together. Mm. And like I said, he's, uh, he's such an amazing man. And he was very, very comforting to me and just helped me go through those things. Um, yeah, it was, it was just, it was easy. Oh, <laughs> it was easy. That, that, that's, that's beautiful. Um, it's almost like you gave birth to something new, or like something beautiful out of the ashes, like a nice feeling. Exactly, because my marriage was a, was not good, and you'll read about that in the book. There was uh, things that happened, and and how we separated was not a good way. Um, and I know that this person now would never do that to me, and mm-hmm. I think that we were meant to be together. I think that everything in my life, including finding the can in the book with the chain in it, was all meant to be. All these steps to me are my life. My life was planned out. I, I believe it 100%. Mm, love that. So let's, um, at this time, I'd l- after hearing all of this. Sorry. Oh, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa is wishing us happy, happy evening. I don't know <laughs> that's how to good. say that word. Anyways, that's live for you people out yeah. there. Is, so who are three people that you think would love to either read your book and or 
this would be a great gift for? Well, women in particular, adventure, a, a couple of different types of women, women. Okay. adventurous women, first of all, women who like to read about adventure and adventurous stories. I believe that that's, they would like this book. Also women who have gone through hard times in their life, mm. whether it be divorce or illness or whatever, that you can get through these things that you can forgive people, you can um, carry on. So that's, I think that's the biggest thing to me is women like that who have stories like my own that they've been through really tough times and they, they want to look up to somebody that's made it through that. And also men. I mean, there's a lot of men as soon as they hear gold mining that they want to they mm. want to know. So gold mining is, like I said, it's something that you, it's gold fever, something you have. And a lot of men want to read about that. They're also adventurous. So I believe men, any kind of man, like this story so <laughs> and um i'm going to suggest a counselor that is either a divorce counselor or a counselor of women yes. because sometimes a conversation is easier had through the words of somebody else so somebody mm -hmm. reading your book mm -hmm. to be able to spur that that comfort the, those questions that bit of vulnerability um in reading your story to be able to communicate their story so it might be a great book for a, a counselor um, of women to give. Um, definitely, it sounds like a historian, somebody yes. who- Yes, that's true too. Yeah, someone who appreciates someone's story, but even like history back farther. Romantic and history. And I'm also gonna say a bit of an, an adventure or treasure seeker, mm -hmm. because I'm sure that someone could maybe try and figure out the map where the other cans are, but I sure <laughs> can't. Um, so that's where I'm going to say three different people to be able to gift uh, this book. We are coming into Great. a couple of three months um, is the holiday season. And what better way to match a gift to the person um, that is going to be receiving your gift. Mm -hmm. Wow. I got to get your book. Oh, I, just, thank uh, you. oh, I think you'll gosh. enjoy it. <laughs> oh, it sounds fantastic. And when we're so, talking about um, women getting through these types of things, also Klondike Kate went through the same things as me. So there's right. her counselor, divorce counselor, it's kind of the same. We both right. went through the same thing. So there's two, two stories there to hear about. And does history repeat itself or do we use history to make our own her story later? Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. Or how do we learn from history as we go right. as we go forward? And I think history does repeat itself. So, I mean, this is uh, this kind of thing isn't going to stop with just me or Klondike Kate. So, <laughs> but the more we talk about it, and write about it in truth. Yeah, you just never know. You just never mm -hmm. know. So, my parting question to you, uh, uh, Brandy, is: What's your words of wisdom for someone who wants to write a book? Just do it, first of all. That's the, I think that's the biggest thing because I think I, I know quite a few people who want to write a book and I'm talking to them. The first thing you have to do is sit down and write it. Just write every day. Just make whatever time you can make to, to sit down and get some something out. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, if you're going to use anybody, if you're doing this on your own and you want the help of a, like the self-publishing agency, make sure you have the manuscript done before you talk to anybody about it editing or anything like that because I've found that um that the money I had to spend on that it would have been better if I'd finished my manuscript first okay and then gone to talk to an editor so yeah those are great. those are the two best things I can think of great words of wisdom that last one no one's ever said in the two years that I've been doing these no one's ever said that so thank yeah. you for sharing that okay um this has been fascinating. I have a brand new genre that I have <laughs> never heard about. You heard it here mm -hmm. on the MYBC Virtual Bookstore author series. I thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Yeah, I know it's been bad. We've been going back and forth for times and days for, nice. uh, for the last week. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you were able to make this time for me uh, tonight to share it out. So there you go, guys, uh, a new genre, a memoir. And what was, it? what did you call it again? Reimagined biography. A reimagined biography. There you go. Brand new. Um, so I often will always leave 
these little chats that I have with people that are creative in the in the literary world is grab that book, get your favorite beverage, find your favorite reading spot, get a good light over you because the nights are getting a little darker, the days are getting a little darker now, and take your mind, body, and soul to somewhere else through the words, the actions, the adventures of someone else. So thank you once again for joining. I will be back next Tuesday, either at 5 p.m. Pacific time or 7 p.m. Um, Pacific time, depending on the author that I'm chatting with. So have a good night, everybody. And we'll make sure that uh, Brandy puts the, in the link on where you can go buy one, two, three, or I think 10 of her books. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody.